am Paul Ang, and I'll be presenting our research on the dominant rainfall patterns in the Philippines using variants of the empirical orthogonal function analysis. Any spatial temporal field F can be decomposed into a temporal amplitude matrix A, eigenvalue matrix lambda, and spatial matrix U for all spatial points X, where the rows of U are known as the empirical orthogonal functions, or EOFs. The top EOFs have the highest contributions to F, representing its dominant spatial patterns. EOFs are mutually orthogonal, but true physical modes are generally not. Thus, variants to the standard EOF have been made. Rotated EOF, or REOF, applies rotation matrices to maximize variability, and the extended EOF, or EOF, stacks the data into sequences to capture land effects. As rainfall is the main climate driver of the Philippines, we compared the dominant seasonal rainfall patterns from EOF, where we expected the variance to show more realistic patterns. We perform EOF for each three-month season based on the local southwest and northeast monsoons. We then apply our EOF to the top 10 EOFs per season, and for EEOF, we stack the seasons in a yearly cycle prior to the standard EOF. The peaks of the dominant patterns have darker shades, here to the east or west, depending on the seasonal wind direction. While EOF2 showed dipoles, our EOF2 showed monopoles. The top two June to November REOFs had non-degenerate eigenvalues, but other seasons were degenerate and over-differentiated. The EEOF rainfall cycle peaked from December to February, emphasizing the influence of the El Nino Southern Oscillation or ENSO phenomenon. Hence, EOF variants revealed more robust rainfall patterns, and we may find likewise for other variables of interest. In this study, we have investigated the possibility of a non-contact electromagnetic manipulation. We have achieved this by fabricating a planar and rotational electromagnetic manipulator using a controlled source of electromagnetic force through a series of electromagnets. Each electromagnet has 1,200 copper winding and an aluminum core. In order to successfully manipulate objects, an experimental minimum current of 100 milliamperes is required. For the rotational manipulator, neodymium magnets were attached on each blade. Magnetic manipulation was successfully achieved by moving the blades through the electromagnetic repulsion of the electromagnet and the neodymium magnets continuously until the input voltage was removed. While a minimum voltage required an initial movement, once the initial voltage was achieved, a linear relationship between the frequency of the rotation and the input voltage has been shown. For the planar manipulator, seven electromagnets were arranged in a hexagonal pattern. Magnetic manipulation was achieved successfully through the repulsion between the electromagnet and the new diamond magnet by driving at least 100 milliamperes of current through one electromagnet. In order to understand the physics, we modeled the manipulator considering only magnetic, gravitational, and frictional forces. We obtained a theoretical minimum current of 94.8 milliamperes, producing an experimental error of 5.5. To obtain the linear relationship between frequency and voltage in the rotational manipulator, an assumption of frictionless contact was used. The results show that theoretical calculations agree with experimental for a minimum input of 350 milliamperes for this setup. So it has been shown that a non-contact manipulation is possible using electromagnets as a mani manageable planar force field and a rotational magnetic influence. Good day everyone, I am Angelo Panlaki from the Philippine Nuclear Research Institute. I will be presenting our recent study entitled Calibration of an Albedo Thermoluminescent Dosimeter Using a Californium 252 Source for Neutron Dose Monitoring in the Philippines. The objectives of this study is to calibrate the system for neutron dose detection and to assess the initial response of the neutron dosimeters available in PNRI. The preliminary calibration was performed in accordance to the manual on starting up a dosimetry service. The next part is determining the relative response of the neutron TLD to a gamma radiation source. In this case, 
a cesium-137 source was used. For the last step, the neutron calibration factors were determined by radiating the neutron TLD to a neutron source. In this case, a Californium-252 source was used. After generating all the requirements for the system calibration, the response of the neutron TLD was validated by irradiating a random set of field dosimeters to a known dose and determining if the measured dose is in agreement with the delivered dose. The reader calibration factor as well as the cesium-137 response is shown in the figure of the neutron TLD per crystal positions. The neutron calibration factors were computed as well. Moreover, the validation test shows that the detected error of 6% was calculated. To conclude, the neutron TLD was successfully calibrated and validation, the validation test has resulted to an acceptable response. With this, I end my presentation and if you have any questions or inquiries regarding to this topic and or our services, please do not hesitate to contact me.